Ironic, gardening is not a new concept. In fact, it can be traced back thousands of years to ancient Rome, though it's still considered experimental. Uh, some believe it's the future of gardening because it's economical, sustainable, and environmentally friendly, um, and a very good way to produce food. One of those believers is Dr. Gene uh, Giacomelli. Uh, he is the professor of agriculture and biosystems engineering at the University of Arizona. Yes. I was just out there last week. Yes. I was. Beautiful place. Oh, oh my gosh, what a wonderful university. You. And you are there uh, teaching students about yes. biodiversity and about hydroponics. Hydroponic crop reduction. Hydroponics is growing plants without yeah. soil. Uh -huh. And when you combine them with controlled environments, you can grow crops and food anywhere in the world, wherever people go, whether it's the deserts of the southwest right. like you saw or the extreme cold of Antarctica. So how many uh, hydroponic farms are there in Arizona, which I guess would be an ideal place to grow? Arizona has over 300 acres of hydroponic crop really? production for tomatoes. tomatoes Texas alone. is the next big grower. So only the roots are in water. That's right, only yeah, the roots the are in plants water. Are, um, you provide the nutrients in the water mm -hmm. and oxygen, and then the plants grow very efficiently. We can uh, essentially make a tomato taste sweeter or more acidic on on how it's grown by the food by by the way it's fed uh -huh. yes and you can grow them year round are you and doing any of them with the fish fertilizer the fish uh, aquaponics yeah. yes we do have yeah. you you saw some of our work there i bet no no a friend of mine has an aquaponic situation yes. in their greenhouse they have they're raising fish in one tank they use the poop from the fish to grow the tomatoes biological Hydro. waste materials yes, yes sir yes <laughs> And the plants, but I the plants to, love I it. I have to talk the, to normal people, not students. They yeah, do. Yeah, they, yeah, love yeah. they, they love it. it. They love it. They love it. So yeah. you've built a greenhouse at the university. Yes. Um, and um, and you want to send this greenhouse to the moon, yes. or someplace like that, maybe Mars, yes. the moon. Well, you know, it's easier, since right? We can grow. Uh, we're growing commercially everywhere on the Earth now. Why don't we plan when we go to the moon and Mars to bring our food systems with us? We right. have to eat. Hydroponics will be key to doing that. So we have a great green um, video of the greenhouse that's going to go to the moon. Yes. Here it is. Oh, Here so it is. This is it. in our laboratory. It uses hydroponics. There's the root systems of the plants. And this is a commercial system that's used throughout the world, uh, um, growing uh, tomato and um, producing quality red fruit, even using bumblebees to pollinate. So they can be grown pesticide free. And there's a technology that Village Farms, a large grower of tomatoes in Texas, is developing to help feed the world. Oh, well, that's a beautiful greenhouse. Oh. Thank you. One other thing that we saw on there was the South Pole. These, those tomatoes on there was not a picture. It was a live image of plants growing at our South Pole greenhouse. No, in Antarctica. In Antarctica. Wow. We feed people there because you cannot bring in any fresh vegetables during Look, the winter period. Is that the greenhouse? This is the station oh, where they live. <gasps> and then you'll see some pictures of people that are growing the crops down there. It's relatively automated. They're very happy because it's cold temperature the there. The people or the, the plants? Both. Oh. We always make first the plants, yes. then the people, of yes. course. They love it there because of the bright lights and the high humidity. You know, it's a frozen desert down there. Oh, yeah. And then the fresh vegetables, you just can't beat them. Oh, and no, you can so grow great. anything. You can grow almost anything, although it can be difficult for big well, crops. Well, certain crops are better, like tomatoes, cucumbers, oh, lettuces. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, any of the greens. Yeah. Any of the greens are, are fast relatively growing. fast growing, straightforward. Right. And, and cabbages. A lot, a lot of fun. Cabbages or better and leafy? Cabbages, leafy, like, leafy, leafy green. Kale. Yeah, it takes your kale. It okay. takes a long time to form that head. Right. You know, we, we don't want to wait for that. But right. uh, we even grew uh, cantaloupe at the South Pole. First Fantastic. one ever. First so one has ever. NASA been supportive of your lunar expedition? NASA has been very supportive. Experimentation. Because they know we're going to have to bring some of this technology to other plants. Are you and taking they provide it up us, to, oh, they, they provided us with a, a relatively large grant, a Steckler grant, and it's oh. being supported through the University of Arizona Space Grant Consortium. Oh, great. And we will demonstrate feeding people, generating oxygen. The CO2 from the plants goes, uh, oh, yeah. provides oxygen and fresh water comes from the plants. So it is a bioregenerative life support system for feeding people. Now, have you gone up to outer space? Have you gone to the space nope. station? Nope. No, I have not. I you have, have to not. go. You have to go and take this up there. I would love to do that. I yeah. would love to do that. And Start and growing and some stuff. We're, we're, we're getting ready to do this, of right. course, but it's going to take a little time yet. 
Well, when we come back, we're going to learn how to make a miniature lunar greenhouse for our homes. Uh, the perfect way to grow produce all year round, and your kids will love this. It's a great experiment. We're back with Dr. Jean Giacomelli and uh, this very interesting greenhouse called a phototron. So why, why is it called a phototron? Well, it has lights. That's, yeah. the, that's the main thing to have the plant grow. But basically, think of it as a lunar greenhouse for your home. You can bring this into your home and grow a tomato. These are cherry tomatoes. Can we lift this up and take a look? Yeah. Cherry tomatoes in here. But you mm. could also grow lettuce, wow. six or seven plants in 30 days. You could then um, have uh, replanting and grow year-round because you have the warm temperatures in the house and the lights provide the energy for the plant to grow. It replaces the sun. Right. How long do the lights stay on during the day? The lights can stay on anywhere from oh. 12 to 16 hours, your, depending on what you're growing. Yeah, so it's right, tomatoes. How long would you have to keep the lights on? I would do it no more than 16 hours. Uh -huh. Yeah, they don't like much. They have to sleep a little bit yeah, just like do, us. Yeah, they do, of know? course. But the, the, the Phototron can, is, is essentially a device you can bring into your home and have fresh vegetables, know where they've come from, how much? you grown these? This is about $300. You can check on the website uh -huh. and, and up. What? A nice piece of equipment. So if you can't afford $300, oh, there's what alternatives. can we do? Okay. I think we have a good alternative okay. right here. Yeah, let's, let's show everybody. Great. It might not be as pretty, but it's very effective. Yes. We start with this, this styrofoam yeah. ice chest. And, uh, I have we line several it. of those in my garage. I bet you do. I you, do. Everybody does. Yeah. So you line it with plastics to make sure the water doesn't leak out okay. because we're going to put our nutrient water in there. And nutrient water is just water that we add fertilizer to. Okay. And you just read the back of the, the recipe on there and it tells you how many teaspoons per gallon to put in. And you fill up that container. So how much? Then. Or should I do it? No, no. no not now, not now. Oh, not this now. is only no, no, make no, believe. No, no, make no. believe. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But then we want to put this lid on here, and you see we have our plants growing, and yes. the base of those will touch the top of the water. Oh, so are these your cutout? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Now that's what we have to do. We have to prepare the cutout, which the easiest thing to do is to uh, put this on, scribe it with a pencil, and then cut the hole a little okay. bit smaller, <laughs> a little bit smaller so it doesn't fall through like okay. a cup holder. Yeah. Now I, I wanted to mention that the black there is to keep the sun from going in to the root system because with the nutrients in the water we get green algae. Right. And well, we don't it could, want that. It, yeah, but it couldn't go. I mean, it just really makes it more waterproof too. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So what are you using okay, here? Okay, so you start with a cup, all right, with the hole in the bottom, and, and you're going to do this. It looks like you're going to plant Swiss chard and kale. Okay. I get privilege of lettuces. I love okay. lettuce. Put a little sphagnum moss. And sphagnum is the plants from the box, right? Okay. All right. So this is plant material. You put a little bit in the bottom, just to block up the hole. And then you fill it with perlite. Perlite is materials, materials from the earth that are heated and popped, like pop rocks, right. basically. And then we take the plant and we place it inside. Well, we might want to put a little bit more in there, pack some around, and okay. then we can place it into... A little more sphagnum moss. Yeah, I'd put a little more sphagnum moss in the bottom okay. there. That, that would be good. Um, we utilize... Um, um, don't to careful tools. I understand this is a very special one here. Oh yes, the so, Martha Craft cutter. Yes, I got I got the, the procedure on how to do that now. So that's okay. good. So this is and good. So sphagnum moss and perlite. Sphagnum moss and perlite. And no food, no slow nope. time release food nope, or anything because it's in the be water. In the water exactly. And the okay. purpose is then to plant these and have them in the lid, put on top. So yeah, so anything green, leafy, tomatoey, cucumbery will well, the, yes. be successful. You might want to keep the leafy greens together and not put a tomato with this okay. group uh, for that matter. Okay. So we can help you put one yeah. more in here. And then you carefully place it on there, bring the water level up just to the bottom of the of the plastic what cup. What fun. And away you go. But you Set need... it outside okay, in out... the sun. Oh, outside. If you can, yes, out oh, okay. of the wind if possible. Or so can... if it's wintertime, then you keep it in the house oh, next I to a see. window. Try to get four to six hours of light a day if you can. So do you have information at, uh, at, oh, from your yes. department we, on the internet? On the internet, we have the, uh, all the explanation for you. So there. how long does it take the roots to um, 
enter the water? Oh, 24, 48 hours, really? they'll be down in the water. And that's the beauty of it, is that you can walk away from it and it's automatically watered. For so you can grow yourself. You can have a whole porch full of these if you want. Absolutely. And you can be growing in water hydroponically. And it's really, really interesting. Now, just keep snipping off the leaves as you need them. Well, you, yeah, you can, eat, you can eat them as you go, uh -huh. certainly. Or you can let them form ahead and then, and then can harvest you, can them Can you once. start seeds like that? Or do you have to have the plants started in well, the flat? Well, I just thought it was easier to go to your garden center, yeah. your favorite one, and buy a transplant. Of okay. course, if you'd like to do the cell pack and yeah. put your favorite seeds so you get the exact variety that you right. want, then certainly you could do that. Okay. And after a few weeks, you have a transplant. And away you go. How fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Jean. And this is a great project. And it's great for uh, school children. They can really uh, enjoy what they grow. And uh, most exciting is your lunar project. Yes. Good luck with that. And thank I'd you love very much. to see lettuce on the moon. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you very much.